Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash trial and get started. Welcome to Criminality Podcast, the podcast where I, Rebecca Sebastian, along with my co-host, Melissa, talk about reality TV, true crime, why we love it, because it's not a crime. I like that. That was, <laughs> You brought everything. You caliced we that got, and brought the milkshake and yeah. all the boys will come to the <laughs> yard now. <laughs> good, good, good. Now that I have everyone's full attention, we had like the who, the what, the when, yeah. the where. You did all the reporter questions. You, you really just yeah. slam dunk. Just wanted to fill in some gaps for people. <laughs> How are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm uh, back from crime, yes. Con, which was super fun. And just, you know, it's always like re-entry after a trip. So I just feel like I've been going a million miles a minute, but um, but it was really fun to be somewhere else. Right? And you yeah. were like in everything, every crime con photo, every everything. <laughs> I would see your face like Rebecca's hosting this or you're talking to this person. It was so cool. You were everywhere. I was kind of everywhere. It was really, really busy and really fun. I did host, I guess I, I guess I did. I'm pretty sure I can verify <laughs> Are you there? that I interviewed the presenters for CrimeCon for the virtual audience. Oh, so cool. after they would speak on the main stage, I would get them in a little studio, just one-on-one, -on -one, which was so fun because it was kind of just me and them, right. but we were interacting with the people at home. So I did that probably like six with six guests. Whoa. So it was busy. Um, and then I'd be at Podcast Row doing that whole thing and gave out lots of criminality stickers. Yay. People were very excited to get those. And uh, yeah, and then just kind of doing the regular rounds. So it was um, it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. <laughs> and it was really fun. I'm still kind of coming down. I'm sure. Oh, that's so fun, though. I'm glad I'm glad you were able to be there. And that it seems like a lot of fun. All the pictures I saw, it seemed really cool. And you hosted the oh, trivia gosh. and everything. And yeah. I did Yellow Tape Trivia Show, which was a blast. Uh, so many great podcasters joined as contestants. And brave audience members got up there oh, nice. on stage. Like, I mean, I'm, I don't know. That's a lot to get picked out of a crowd. Like, they raised their hand yeah, and yeah. just make them come up. So that was really fun because we got to include the audience and we played for charity. So whichever podcaster won got to make a donation. Well, yellow tape, I made the donation yeah. on their behalf. So it was just, it was a really good time. Oh, that's awesome. Very fun. Yay. Yeah. You'll have to play next time. I know. I we'll have to go next You know, time. I have like the few things that I've done with you before we started this, one of them was that trivia that we did with John Lorden. And yep. uh, I am I am obsessed with trivia. I love it. I but I come to win. I really want to win. Well, I like what you're saying because uh, Dr. Shiloh won, and she's played with me a few times, and she wins a lot too. She's very competitive. She takes it very seriously. So I'm I'm feeling a good that showdown would be good. coming up. Yeah, and like you're both kind of my friends, so it'll be. Wait, I don't know. Of. Maybe I'll have to. Ex well, no, I, know I mean, she's you both your are friend. my friends. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I diluted that <laughs> sentence with a kind of, you're both my very dear, wonderful friends that I love and adore. So what I'm getting at is I think like, do I need someone else to do that round? Like, I don't think I could handle this. Oh stress. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring John Lorden back there in for you this go. one. <laughs> That'd be fun. But yeah, it was a good time. Any updates from you and your neck of the woods? No, absolutely nothing. My life is just as exciting as it was yesterday. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, nothing exciting. That's fine, right? That's Keep great. Trucking. Yeah. It's summer. Look, if things get too exciting, sometimes they get criminal. 
Yeah, they do. Oh, if you're listening to Moms and Murder, I've been talking about my son listening to uh, Rick Astley, Never Gonna Give You Up on repeat for the past <laughs> four weeks, Rebecca. We're into week four. Last night, I had to start a YouTube video over that plays it because we stayed with my parents. They're staying kind of near us for a week and uh, had to play one hour YouTube tape and had to repeat it. So I heard Rick Melissa. Astley never going to give you up for two straight hours before he finally fell asleep. You're a saint. <laughs> You're a saint among saints. So that song had a rebirth. Like, I remember my kids went through a phase of knowing it. Yeah. And I don't know why. So like, did he? I remember it being on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And that's like the okay, most maybe. current time that I remember hearing it. But I don't know how he heard it. Because I do remember this being a thing among my kids and right. being like, why do you guys know this song? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so interesting. Well, maybe he'll get sick of it soon. I don't know. Well, I mean, then I'd have to think what could be next. You know, there's there's going to be a right. next. <laughs> yeah. It will be to replace it with something else. It won't just be an, a, a nice no, silence. No, no, it won't be silent. So I, I think like, you know, the devil, you know, is better than the devil you don't. So <laughs> that is that is absolutely there true. Oh my gosh. Well, um, headphones, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've got, always got one in listening to podcasts. Yeah. That's when I listen to all my podcasts. That's, it's a great time to catch up, but I still hear Rick, Rick rolling me <laughs> in the back. <laughs> you probably fall asleep to it in your brain. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, well, I'm never going to let you go either. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to think of a quick lyric that I could segue into this. I don't have one. No, I could have. I could come up with 50 right now. This yeah, no, you I'm could just probably kidding. just spit them all out. I don't want to run around or disappoint you. So maybe should we get I into like today's it. story? Yes. Good job. <laughs> nice segue. Okay. Well, this is good. It's good that we're talking. <laughs> it's good that we're talking here tonight. You know, reality TV is why we started this podcast and true crime. True crime is like the birthplace. And then reality is like, I don't know. It's like. The afterbirth? <laughs> the afterbirth, yeah, I guess. We put it in our freezer. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't know about you, but I think as we're getting more into the podcast with every story, I'm like, what is the motivating factor for people to go on these shows, right? Because totally. we are focusing on people who've gotten into some troubles, which makes the question, you know, even more amplified. Like, what were you thinking? Right. But the show I'm going to talk about tonight is unique, in that there, there kind of is a very clear motivating factor. At least that's what they will tell you. And any participant in this show even signs a very hardcore contract that dictates what they do with their lives for a year and possibly longer after they appear on the show. So it's not to be taken lightly. The main motivation for the show we're going to talk about is love. Specifically, true love that hopefully ends in marriage. Which leads me to a question, Melissa. Will you accept this episode? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess sort of. Was that the word you used with me? Sort of. Yeah, I'll sort of do it. Kind yeah, of kind of. acceptance. <laughs> I will God, kind of I'm never going to live this down. No, this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously, though, what is your relationship to The Bachelor, which I assume now you know what we're talking about. I have a full on Red Rose background. I'm, I'm trying to just get into the headspace yes. uh, that is The Bachelor, which is a crazy headspace. It, so It is a lot. Um, talk to me. Okay, first season of The Bachelor, I watched. My friend Michael, my friend who was friends with me in third grade, we had a big Bachelor watch and like we're so devastated when, was is, is her name Trista? Trista? Trista yeah, Ryan, right? Trista Wren. There you go. No, no. Well, they got married but that wasn't the bachelor. right but whenever she right. got rejected we were just oh. heartbroken and just yeah could not believe it and so that's like my first memory i didn't really watch for years and then i think i watched her bachelorette and then somehow i got into bachelor in paradise kim from people are wow. wild was like watch that oh it's like a cesspool i love it so much it's <laughs> it's what's the phrase be eating crackers I won't say the word but be eating crackers I watch it like that like I don't like any of them but I'm just full on watching You're it just, and judging all of it and then yeah it, so how does it differ from the bachelor truth be told haven't watched in paradise I kind of get the idea that it's a little more um like what's the word free for all it is. like it's more it's wilder <laughs> it is it's all if I remember correctly so I've only watched a couple of years you leave if you don't have a connection, a connection, which <laughs> <laughs> which uh, you can use that term however you want to. Um, but a lot of them, it's just like 
my favorite season that I did watch, everybody meets at Stagecoach. What is Stagecoach? It's like uh, Coachella. I it's like a music festival. No idea. I don't know. I've never heard okay, of it. Okay. Well, then now I feel hip. It, I think it's like <laughs> a music festival. And they like all met there and like dated or hooked. I don't know what term people use now. Hooked up? Hooked in? I don't know. <laughs> And so then every, the whole thing, season was people just apologizing to people like, I didn't know you hooked in, connected with this person <laughs> yesterday, and I hooked in and deposited the other day. And so it was just a bunch of apologies, but it's full on hornball city. That's what I would call it. Yeah. Okay. That's what it looks like. <laughs> and, and you know, The Bachelor is like the breeding ground for that, right? Because right. they're trying to contain it and keep it like... I only have PG eyes for 13. you and yeah. Yeah. Like ABC, I don't know, eight o'clock. Maybe this one's on later. I'm guessing. It's ABC like, after dark for sure. Lots of fornicating in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Or the hot tub, oh. which I think comes up later. I think it was Bachelor uh, in Paradise and not The Bachelor, but it's, it's a weird show, the whole concept. And it's, it says a lot about us as a people, like what we want to watch because First dates, you know, are so cringy. And so we choose to watch them yeah. with these people. But really, we're just kind of waiting for the good stuff, which comes later, which is the relationship imploding. Like, it's it's terrible. And yet, here we are. But my relationship is similar to yours. I watched the first, kind of watched somewhere in the middle. Right. And then I tapered off. So I just want to be really clear. I know there are Bachelor fans. Bachelor who will know. Well, yeah, I was just going to say I'm leaving the Bravo sphere <laughs> to go to Bra Bachelor Nation, right? So I'm not in my depth. This is not my normal habitat. So um, <laughs> I, I hope I'll get everything right. And I probably won't go as in-depth into the Bachelor Nation as Bachelor fans would like. But um, but I certainly understand the, the core premise. Right. So let's talk about this this show. The Bachelor premiered on March 25th, which just happens to be my birthday, uh, but in the year 2002, won't do the math on how old I was, but um, if you want to feel old, that makes the show 19 years and 25 seasons old. Yikes. It was created by Mike Fleiss, who also writes and directs the show. And he's a Hollywood producer who created other shows, including the WB's Superstar, hmm. which is an American Idol spoof, The Bachelorette, of course, The Will and High School Reunion. But The Bachelor actually wasn't his first attempt at a reality TV romance show. In the year 2000, he created a one-season disaster called Who Wants to Marry a Multi-Millionaire? Do you love this One show, One of Melissa? my favorite shows with <laughs> Darva Conger. Is that her name? Darva? Yes. yes. Love yes. it. Love it. Yeah. Okay. This is great. I've I've clearly met my match, my better match, because I, I missed this amazing No, it's show. terrible. It's really terrible. Well, there's a lot of controversy, which I'm sure you're well familiar. The show's lead, Rick Rockwell, uh, apparently it wasn't even his name. His name was Richard Bulky. I can understand the change. Yeah. Richard, you know. <laughs> apparently he wasn't even really a millionaire. And before his alleged successful career as a motivational speaker, he was a stand-up comedian. And it was after the show, when the relationship dissolved, that he did a tour called The Annulment Tour. So... I guess this is where the whole idea of, quote, being in it for the right reasons developed right. because maybe he just maybe wasn't. So, you know, that comes up a lot in The Bachelor, like, but are they in it for the right reasons? It's like this very common trope in The Bachelor. So unlike Who Wants to Marry a Multimillionaire, The Bachelor was a much more successful endeavor. The premiere episode received 10 million viewers oh. and the finale of that same first season had 18 million. So the buildup within that show from the first night to the last was really like almost doubled. Yeah. Let's just pretend someone's not familiar with the bachelor. We'll give you the quick high level concept. It's a reality dating competition in which one man was deemed an eligible bachelor. He gets his choice of 25 ready to marry women. And through the process of group and one-on-one -on -one dates, he eliminates them one by one through these rose ceremonies that are, you know, the worst mm -hmm. to sit through. You have to call them up by name to give them a rose. You have to ask if they'll accept it. They have to accept it. And then basically you're left standing there without a rose. You know, you got to go, but you still have to go up and say goodbye. That's the hardest part for me, frankly, to watch. And then it comes down to three women for hometown dates, then two who get the option of spending a night off camera in the fantasy suite with the finale being a breakup with one and possibly an engagement to the other. 
which would then make them the winner, I suppose. So <laughs> it depends. the show has had its, it's very popular, but it's had its fair share of uh, criticism that it's too edited, it's contrived, that the scenarios they put these contestants in are so unrealistic that people, you know, anyone could fall in love with somebody under the right circumstances in exotic locations away from distractions like home and jobs and work. Not to mention it's kind of dated and, and in my opinion, kind of perpetuates a very unrealistic fantasy of adult relationships. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we don't tune in to watch people like doing the mundane life together, yeah. right? That's not entertainment. So here we are, The Bachelor. Now, it is worth noting that while it remained popular, viewership has actually fluctuated a lot. And I think we're very good examples of that. Like we tuned in in the beginning, kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. We know a little bit about what's going on right now. And that shows in the data about the show. Uh, viewership has fluctuated so much that in January of this year, it was only getting 5 million on premiere night. And by the season finale of 2021, just six. Ooh. So smaller numbers, smaller growth. I'm wondering if it's a sign of the times. Like, is this just a tired concept? Is this show just not interesting anymore? Have we moved on? It's starting to feel tired. To we me. have love is blind now. We've just cranked it up. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> which is so much better. And I just think they're like, I think they, it's probably time to bow right. out. But I don't want to upset the masses. Not Batch Nation. Um, Hashtag Batch Nation. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the first Bachelor was Alex Michael. And when you look back, which I did... He just looks so boring. Mm -hmm. He's barely cute. And I think as the show grew in popularity, The Bachelors kind of got a little more exciting, uh, bigger personalities. And there were people who, yes, did want to find love, but also people who wanted to be on TV. And sometimes those people are a little more interesting to watch. Okay, now for anybody who is new to The Bachelor, maybe, and is saying... <laughs> This sounds dumb and maybe even anti-feminist and like a quasi-modern beauty pageant. I would say, hold on. ABC must have had the same thought because less than a year later, they came out with the counterpart spinoff The Bachelorette for an equal opportunity dating show experience. <laughs> same concept, but a woman is the lead, picking her favorites from among a group of eager guys who are definitely all there to settle down and get married in six weeks. Yeah. Oh, right. gosh. So as you mentioned, Trista was the first Bachelorette. It debuted less than a year later in January of 2003. So she was rejected from season one. She went on to be the Bachelorette and chose Ryan Sutter, to whom she is still married. And they have two kids. They are one of like a handful of actually yeah. married and still together couples. So good for them. I mean, theirs is truly the success story. Uh, the Bachelorette is now 18 years old and we're heading into the 18th season. So you've already mentioned Bachelor in Paradise. Can you mention other spinoffs besides The Bachelor and Bachelorette? Wasn't there, there's a Bachelor karaoke thing that I know came out this last year. Not karaoke, it's some kind of singing thing where they fall in love. Well, that must be Bachelor Live on stage. Well, actually, I don't think that's it. It's something else. Oh, well, could well I have all of them listed okay. here so I'm gonna you name them and you tell, tell me you. if one of them is that because I don't know what you're talking about so <laughs> this is amazing don't watch it okay, it's terrible so, go ahead so we've got the bachelor the bachelorette bachelor pad bachelor in paradise the bachelor winter games bachelor live bachelor live on stage the bachelor presents listen to your heart listen what? to your heart it's listen, listen to, to your, your heart, heart. Okay. horrific Horrific. Allah, the song yes oh my gosh and listening and singing oh I, I say no more and then there's The Bachelor, The Greatest Seasons Ever, which I think was like a COVID substitution for a new season of The Bachelorette, and people were not thrilled, but some people like it because it's like a curated version of like all The Bachelors. So efficient, maybe? I don't know. Typically, the show runs on drama and more than a few scandals, some more serious than others, but there seem to be a few key ingredients that make The Bachelor Bachelorette recipe. Tears, a villain, and surprise cameos. The contestants generally are either like the good guy or girl or the bad boy, bad girl. There's not a lot of room for nuance. Like we like to love them or we like to hate them. If we're neutral about them, we probably don't know their name. Right. Yeah, for right? sure. So it's surprising that a quiet, hardworking farmer from Iowa showed up as one of 25 Bachelors on Bachelorette Season 10, starring prosecutor Andy Dorfman in 2014. I did watch at least parts of me that because she's very memorable to me and I liked her. Right. 
She was smart. I mean, obviously attractive. And I don't know. She just was very watchable. Yeah. Well, do you remember her? I do. And I was just very curious how she was a prosecutor and wanted to do this. This That's where I was. I, there was like a disconnect for me. So I just wanted well, to see like. How's that going for you? <laughs> well, here's what I know about lawyers. A lot of them have like a performance streak to hmm. them. So it's a more practical profession. So my theory is like maybe she really wanted to be an actress huh. or a performer of some kind, but she went to law school where you do have to really be a great communicator sure. and presence matters. But yeah, also implies she's really smart. Yeah, so yeah. to your point, like what was she doing? That's being the part. Bachelor? That was really my. Yeah, I think that's more <laughs> to your point, but maybe it was just fulfilling that part of her yeah. like also how do you take the time off I think she even quit her job yep. to do it like it's crazy so Chris actually made it to her final three but she let him go during the fantasy suite episode before taking him up there because she didn't feel that she had as good a foundation as she had with the two other guys which was really hard obviously for Chris to hear and to watch because this is just where it gets so hard to watch yeah I mean so We'll later learn a lot more about Chris and Iowa, but the main highlight point is that he's not leaving there. And so it's like Iowa or bust. And any woman who wants to be with him has to be okay with being in Iowa as like a farmer's wife. Right. And so Andy is crying and she really doesn't want to hurt him, but she's, in my opinion, a woman of integrity so much so that she's like, I could take the easy road and just say, this is about Iowa but it's not. It's you. And I was just like, oh, just say it's <laughs> Iowa. Yeah. Like, this is so rough. And so she basically is like, it's you. It's not Iowa. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So he was really devastated. I applaud her honesty. But Ooh. ouch. <laughs> I'm OK. Really a tasteful lie, like a little lie like that. I would have been fine. With. Please lie to me. If it's me, lie to don't me. tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yes. say it's because I'm from Florida. I have accepted uh, that. <laughs> you are so funny. I mean, that's that's valid. Actually, you know, I, I get it a lot. Kidding. I did read in Entertainment Online just this year that she said if she could do it all over again, she would have given her final rose to Chris. Whoa! I know, and that's after she knows everything that we're about to talk about on this episode. So, just gonna put that out there. Mm. So she ended up giving it to Josh Murray. That relationship did not end well, but he did go on to win Bachelors in Paradise. So all is not lost for Josh Murray. We'll end Andy Dorfman's story here and get back to Chris. Because Chris was a fan favorite. The audience liked him. He was a gentleman. He was manly. He seemed sincere. He was a nice guy who just genuinely loved his work, which is farming. And maybe the most complicated thing about him, what I mentioned earlier, was that he didn't want to leave his family, his farm, or Iowa. So he was selected to be the 2017 season 19 bachelor. Now his mission would be to find a woman who would be okay with all of that. So who is Chris Soules and just where exactly in Iowa does he live? <laughs> well, Christopher Douglas Soules was born in Arlington, Iowa. Population, any guesses, Melissa? He said it was a small town. So I'm from a town with 1,600 people and I would say lower than that. 500. Oh my gosh, so good. 490. Oh, whoa. That was wow. That was really good and also really small. Yeah, very, very small. <laughs> like when I think of a small town, I think of a couple thousand people, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, the city has a total area of 1.05 square miles. Whoa. There are some other notable residents, though. Only two are from the 20th century <laughs> <laughs> Brian Shonwan pronunciation. I'm sorry. Uh, he is an Iowa state senator and Chris Soules, the other. The <laughs> other two are literally from the 1800s. So sorry, I had to include it because it made me laugh yeah. <laughs> so much. Chris is a fourth generation Iowa farmer, but farmer is really not a fair uh, and accurate description. He is an agricultural businessman. Mm. Farming is what he knows, but he really took his family's farm to another level. I don't know what you know, Melissa, about farming. I'm from New Jersey and I've lived my adult life in New York City, so clearly not an authority. Uh, but I think of it as a small local business. Mm -hmm. And Chris learned in high school about real estate and land acquisition. And he began growing his family's farm even in his teens through growing their property. He was very smart to think, well, the more land we own, the more right. stuff we can grow and the more stuff we can sell. And so today he, along with his father, 
and a business partner offer a 5,000 acre corn and soybean farm and a hog operation that finishes about 30,000 hogs per year. I can assume what finishes means and don't really want to yeah, go yeah. into it anymore. I eat hot dogs. I Just, love some bacon. Yeah, same. Just like the housewives of Beverly Hills. I Once or twice a year, I just get so excited about a hot dog. So Chris was a high school wrestler, football player, and his friends referred to him as the life of the party. And I did look up some high school yearbook photos of him and that tracks. He is boisterous. He looks kind of goofy, still really handsome, but he looks silly and extroverted, which is a little different from how he appears as we know him. He's like more stoic and reserved, but he looked like um, the life of the party yeah. in high school. But overall, on the show, he presented sincerely and nice, and especially the other guys who seemed to have big egos and thrive on drama. Chris became affectionately known on The Bachelor as Prince Farming. Hmm. So in Chris's season, he ended up having to choose between crowd favorite Becca, who really Chris seemed to really love yeah. and have a connection with, and I, I'm going to go to you for more about this in a minute, uh, and Whitney, who was just ready to have his babies. Yeah, yeah. Her, her words. Ultimately, he did choose Whitney, and they were engaged for about six months before breaking up. Now, I want to pause, and I know you recently watched The Women Tell All from that season, so give me, like, the Becca Whitney dish from your side. So mostly it was the other ones infighting, but I did watch Becca and Whitney um kind of talk and I really liked Becca I mean I only really got to see whenever she came on and said you know I understand why you didn't choose me I think you're wonderful and could not have been more cordial and kind to each yeah. other and then Whitney came in and I was like I don't understand do you know who Whitney looks like to me she looks like somebody that I can't Holly Montag who... before her surgeries that's it right yes she was Heidi 1.0 yeah yes <laughs> I don't know yes. what point oh we're on now with Heidi 7.0 oh eight, eight and a half I don't know yeah the many faces of Heidi yeah yeah she does she's very chipper and yeah a lot of what I was reading and refreshing from that season is that Becca just wasn't there with her feelings and that made it too risky right. for Chris to go all in with her but most people theorize that he really did yeah. probably have more connection to her. But Becca seemed so reasonable. And she was like, I would still continue dating you, but um, I'm not, I can't lie and say I'm ready to marry right. you when I'm not. And she wasn't going to let the kind of factory of that show push her into that, which right. I applaud. So anything else you want to add about the women? Tell oh, them? no. Um, oh, well, there was some girl named Kelsey and I learned a lot about her and they hated Kelsey. <laughs> hated Kelsey and some girl ate an onion or had an onion and she brought out an onion I don't know there was a lot going on it it was it was hard to follow but it was chaotic I know, <laughs> I know this won't narrow it down but was Kelsey blonde no she had she uh she was brunette she had short oh gosh I realized her and I basically have the same haircut now she has short <laughs> uh brunette hair she'd been married and her husband died and then she made the mistake in one part oh. of the show oh she like had a fake panic well, they said it was a fake panic. It's attack. all coming back to me. Yeah, yeah. that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did but not go like on. her. The story. Oh, the story with her husband, husband dying. Oh, and then she says, what was the line she said? I love my story. My story so great. Something like that where she was basically saying, I oh. went through all of this and I love my story. Kind of more of like an empowerment thing. But the way it came out was like. My you husband's dead. Husband yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it because it led you to the Bachelor, right? Yeah, I so it was, do remember this. It was real gross. I don't think that's. I definitely don't think that's what she meant. I'm sure she no. grieved and was going through all of that. But it, it, the way it was edited, was not good at all. Of course, and I'm sure editing, she seemed horrified. Plus, yeah, her misspeaking was a deadly combination. Uh, well, after Chris's appearance on The Bachelorette and The Bachelor, he did what many contestants do and he would appear on Dancing with the Stars and this was during his engagement to Whitney and it wasn't long after that that they broke up so I think that was you know maybe not the best move for the relationship though for his career I guess you know you want to seize all those opportunities right. it does seem like the bachelor trajectory right how else are you going to get those flat tummy tea ads for exactly. Instagram exactly Souls was the 12th and final celebrity to fill the cast and midway through the competition he injured his calf because dancing is a sport 
I'm serious. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are always surprised at like how rigorous it is on their body. Right. Uh, but he, he danced through it and he was eliminated that week after that uh, on May 5th, 2015, week eight. And he finished in fifth place, which is respectable. Yeah. Finally, in September, he had one more appearance to make, and that would be on Worst Cooks in America Celebrity Edition. <laughs> I love Worst Cooks in America. There's a Sonya um, season. I loved it. Melissa, I love that you know. And I sometimes am like, am I worthy of being your co-host? Because I, I had never heard of the show. I mean, sort of. It's every Wait, is night it sort is of worst. or kind of? Uh, dang it's it. kind of. It's kind of. And it. let's keep bringing it up. It'll be great. Okay. We could just kind play of. a clip of it every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be honest, like, it's worst cooks in America every night at my house. I know. House. Like, I, I, I don't need it. to watch that. <laughs> um, but he was on a season with Full Circle Moment JWoww. Oh. Uh, so that was fun. And yeah, in the celebrity edition, the winning celebrity would get to donate $50,000 to a charity, but he did not win. He was the third person eliminated. Mm. So that ended pretty quickly. Let's take a quick break and ponder whether or not you'd like to accept this final rose. So we saw a lot of Chris Souls in 2015, not as much in 2016, but he popped back up in the news in 2017, this time for a much harsher reality. Do you, Melissa, remember any headlines from this time? And can you tell me what you remember as having had happened? Here is what I thought happened. I thought he was driving and was intoxicated and hit somebody on a tractor and they died. That's what I never looked into the story, but that's what I thought happened. That's yes and no. So it was Monday, April 24th, 2017. Souls was driving home in his pickup truck when he rear-ended a man driving a tractor. So correct. This is not unusual to be, you know, driving a tractor. Yeah. It was um, dusk in the spring. So there was like a little light, but it was almost dark. And what I learned was that it was like, that's a busy season, the spring. So he was working late to finish the crops. I don't know what finishing the crops means, but that's what he was doing. I don't doing. think it means whatever you do with the hogs, so we're good. Yeah, when exactly. Finish here is, is less definite. Have you ever had that moment when you're leaving the house and you wonder, did I lock the door? Or worse yet, you start spiraling and you imagine all the what ifs. I used to feel that way all the time, but it wasn't until a few years ago when I heard about a break-in just a few blocks away that I realized I needed to really step up my home security game. And now I can spiral about the what-ifs on things that don't matter, like reality stars, instead of the what-ifs of home security. We've had Simply Safe protecting our house for the last few years now, and it's a total game changer. With Simply Safe's fast protect monitoring, I know within five seconds if something's actually up and the lifeguards can actually speak to intruders to stop them. That's faster than a reality TV star can throw a drink. One of the things I really love the most is you're not locked into some over the top 90 day fiance level contract drama. Simply Safe is actually affordable as well, less than a dollar a day with no hidden fees, so it's easy to love. It's no wonder they've been named Best Home Security Systems by U.S. News and World Report for five years running. Whether you want to install it yourself, it really takes less than an hour, or have a professional handle it, Simply Safe is as easy as flipping channels between Chimp Crazy and the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. So why wait for the drama to happen? Get Simply Safe and know your home is covered just like I did. Protect your home with 50% off a new Simply Safe system. Plus, a free indoor security camera when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafe.com slash criminality. That's simplysafe.com slash criminality. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Okay, it's time to commit. 2024 is the year for prioritizing yourself. Begin your new smile journey with Byte, and you could start seeing results in just two to three weeks. Just order your at home impression kit today for only $14.95 at byte.com. Bite Clear Liners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces, plus they offer financing options, accept eligible insurance, and you could pay with your HSA, FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Bite. This is according to uh, the Des Moines Register. So the tractor and the man fell over into a ditch on the side of the road. And this man was 66-year-old Kenneth Mosher. And this being a small town, their families were actually well acquainted. The Souls and the Moshers knew each other. I don't know if Chris knew at that moment who it was, but it would later come out that the families knew each other. 
Chris pulls over, goes to his aid, and calls 911 immediately. When the dispatcher asks him who he is and a series of questions, he identifies himself as Chris Souls, and he also says the man doesn't appear to be conscious. The 911 operator asks if he knows CPR, which he doesn't, but he's able to get somebody else to help him. So I don't know if that person just arrived on the scene right. driving and pulled over. We don't know, but somebody did assist him with CPR. Unfortunately, though, Kenneth was pronounced dead at the hospital. The paramedics arrive and Chris speaks with them, but he takes off before the police arrive. It's unclear if he left on foot or if someone drove him or he drove himself. He was about six miles from home. So the police arrive to the scene and are like, where is the guy who hit him? Right. And the paramedics are like, he left. So it doesn't take them long to figure out who it is because, like we said, it was recorded on the call that it was Chris Souls. So the police show up at Chris's door and Chris refuses to open it, let them in or speak unless they have a warrant. They do note that there are empty beer cans inside his car, which mm. are plainly visible. And it's confirmed through their investigation that his last stop before this accident was at a liquor store on his way home. Now, Chris's decision not to talk is really interesting to me because you and I both do a lot of true crime stories and... I'll always say, get a lawyer. Right. And it's honestly, my kids are now teenagers and one is out of the house. She's 21. I tell them, like, this is what you tell cops if they come. You can't search without a warrant and I want an attorney. Right. It, it's Doesn't just matter. that simple. Mm -hmm. My kids have never gotten into any kind of trouble. Yeah. That would, I'm not saying this out of experience. I'm just saying it from what I've read. That is the best thing that you should do. Right. I in most cases would say, yeah, that's what he should do. However, because he caused the accident... It's just such a sketchy move because it just makes you look more guilty. Right. But of course, it, you know, it looks like a self-protective tactic. And it's speculated that because he made the police get a search warrant, that took several hours. And so all that time elapsed. By the time they gave him a blood alcohol test, it was uh, under the legal limit. Mm -hmm. But many people think he probably would have been intoxicated if they had tested him right at that moment. So Chris was buying time. Yeah. So he wasn't charged with a DUI, but he was arrested and charged with leaving the scene of a fatal traffic accident in Aurora, Iowa, which is a class D felony in the state of Iowa. So that would really become important to this case. I guess these laws, they're statewide, right? So right. what happens in Florida, New York, Iowa are different. But in Iowa, this was a, a felony. He spent a night in jail, did find a photo of him in prison garb and orange Crocs, which I will share if that's interesting. Uh, Chris gets a lawyer, of course, and he makes his first court appearance the next afternoon at an Iowa courthouse. He was released after making bail, which his mother paid $10,000, and he was given an ankle monitoring device while the investigation and trial continued. So, side note, he was actually scheduled to be filming Bachelor in Paradise in the next several days, and he was going out of the country, but that would not happen as he had to turn over his passport. His rep put out the following statement. Chris Souls was involved in an accident Monday evening in a rural part of Iowa near his home. He was devastated to learn that Kenneth Mosher, the other person in the accident, passed away. His thoughts and prayers are with Mr. Mosher's family. So all of this happened in April 2017, but there would not be a sentence or a resolution for more than two years because justice moves slowly, yeah. but also it moves slower when you have an expensive legal team, right? That's like their job is just to delay hearings and by time. And so this really could have been kind of short and simple and probably would have been, but it dragged out. His lawyer was fighting from day one to avoid a trial to keep Chris out of the courtroom and to avoid further tarnishing his reputation. Over the course of the next two years, there were several hearings and the main goal was for Chris's lawyer to get a lower charge instead of the felony. Soul's attorneys initially sought to get the felony charge dismissed, arguing that Soul's did not violate the Iowa Code regarding leaving the scene of a personal injury accident because he called 911 after the crash and identified himself. So that ended up being the crux of the argument for two years. Iowa state law says that's a felony. Lawyers argued, well, it isn't just like he hit and ran. Right. He identified himself. He rendered aid. He saw that medical help was there and then he left. Yeah. So that would basically be the long argument over two years in a nutshell. Which seems like a fair argument to me to say. It really he, does. He could have easily not said his name. And you hear about people leaving all the time to do all those steps. He wasn't really trying to hide anything initially, at least. I absolutely agree. 
Now, if he were to get the felony charge, if it were to stick, he would face up to five years in prison. If they could get that charge down to leaving the scene of a personal injury accident, which is not a fatal accident, it would only be two years. So the difference is big, and obviously his lawyers want to do that. Eventually, he avoids trial by pleading guilty to the lesser charge of leaving the scene of a personal injury accident. So that charge is just an aggravated misdemeanor. In November of 2018, the family of Kenneth Mosher brings a wrongful death lawsuit against Chris and his family, which the Souls family and Chris pay out. It's $2.5 million to the victim's family. Whoa. The settlement was approved within three days of its filing, and they did that to avoid any civil litigation and finding more culpability for the Souls family and their larger insurance. I think the vehicle Chris was driving was maybe a company vehicle. Oh. So the farm and all the insurance was going to get involved. So they were like, let's just do this. And also I like to think it was the, they right felt it was the right do. thing to yeah. do. So fortunately, while the criminal proceedings were lengthy and lasted two years, the civil part was yes, yeah, civil and short. I also wonder if they did the, the settlement like Chris and his family to keep their name out of it, you know, for to keep it from dragging, because I didn't know about any of this part of the story. And, right. you know, and that is probably because it wasn't all in the news. And now they're fighting and they're going back and forth. And absolutely. Just quite, yeah. I'm sure the legal team advised that way as well. One thing that the lawyer said, and this is to your point, Melissa, is that this is a quote, Chris Souls did the morally responsible thing. He did everything he could for the victim of this accident. And Initially, the judge sided with the prosecution, but eventually did come to see the defense's side of it and reduce that charge. Now that they had the lower charge, the real work began to delay sentencing and to do everything possible to avoid the prison time. And their tactics seemed to work. Chris's lawyer asked for a brand new investigation. Now, this was interesting. He cited that there were written statements from the victims that were problematic to Chris's defense. Because the victim statements, so the family of Kenneth Mosher, had handwritten statements that were included in the investigation that was given. Basically, when Chris's charge changed to the lower one of leaving an accident after personal injury, the victim statements were basically, his team argued, no longer relevant because mm -hmm. he wasn't admitting to having anything to do with the death and leaving the scene of a fatal accident. And their statements were based on the death of Kenneth Mosher. So it was a highly technical legal oh, okay. argument. And they went so far as to say it would violate Chris's civil rights as the defendant if they were included. They were basically prejudicial. So the idea being that it was a personal injury whenever he left, it didn't become a fatal accident. He wasn't, exactly. oh, wow. That's... He wasn't determined dead until arriving at the hospital. Got it. Oh, that's interesting. So- uh, this is a, also just another glaring example of, you know, when you can pay for a good yeah. lawyer, you get different results. Right. Like, yeah. I don't think your average Iowa public defender and no shade on Iowa, probably any state yeah. would maybe have even the bandwidth and time to argue that they're so, so overworked. Many. Do you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? This is like the luxury of an expensive yeah. lawyer. His lawyer also brought up the fact that in conjunction with a plea, they also stated that the tractor... Kenneth Mosher was writing was improperly lit and revealed new information about injuries that souls got in the accident. So nothing was said about that because Chris was very focused on the victim at the time of the accident. But when he hit the tractor, his airbag deployed, he hit his head on the windshield, which did oh, wow. have that kind of like shatter mm -hmm. look. It didn't go through the glass, but had that like ring of shatter. And he was diagnosed with a concussion. So all of this combined after more than two years of delays, Judge Andrea Dreyer accepted a plea agreement from Chris and sentenced him to a suspended prison sentence of two years and two years probation. So the prison sentence would be suspended, but he would have to have two years of probation. Okay. Now, this could be the end of the story, but I want to share a couple more parts of Chris's story before I get your response on the findings of the judge and how that all shook out. Okay. I did a little research and Chris's first legal trouble surrounding alcohol and cars started much, much earlier. Oh, gosh. 
1998, Souls was just 16 and was convicted for the first time of speeding 10 miles over the 55 mile per hour speed limit, and he was sentenced with a fine. Now, that's not a huge deal, but young and driving fast, right. setting a picture. 2001, he was found guilty of underage drinking and failure to maintain control of a vehicle in two separate incidents. He got off both with fines. Mm. In May and August of that same year, he was twice convicted of possession of alcohol under the age of 21. Now, I think at this point he was 19 or 20, mm-hmm. so it's not like he was 15, right. but still. Yeah. In the August incident of those two, he was also found guilty of driving with an open container of alcohol, running a stop sign, and speeding. Those cases all resulted in fines. In February of 2002, Souls was convicted of fighting, and I couldn't find more details on with who or over what, right. but fighting. And in March, he was back in court on a charge of leaving the scene of an accident, which was later reduced to a count of defective brakes. So we maybe can give him a pass on that one. But I'm like, did he crash eventually? Like, how do you... Right. Like, if your brakes are defective to not stop at an accident, I don't know. That's sketchy. So Souls managed to stay out of trouble for four years until 2006 when he was convicted of his most serious charge prior to the 2017 accident, which was driving while intoxicated, and he was fined more than $500, and he got sentenced to a year of probation. Whoa. I know, but there's a little more. In 2007, he was found guilty of speeding, and the same charge would bring him back to court in 2009. Soul's final brush with the law before his 2017 arrest happened in 2010 when he was convicted and fined for registration violation. Okay, so it's a lot. Yeah. Each thing, maybe if you had that on your record, not a big deal at all. Like a violation here and there. But these are a lot of moving vehicle violations. Right. Which you know, those aggregate. Like people get their license suspended if you've sped more than once. If you've had alcohol underage, open container. And then he actually did have a DUI. So all of this never was mentioned in his 2017 proceedings. They wouldn't allow it? I don't know. It wasn't even mentioned that his lawyer got this to be suppressed. Oh, which is my to guess. Be. Yeah, yeah. No, my be. guess is that absolutely he had a great lawyer who right. just said this is irrelevant. Too much time has passed. Right. Whatever. Those are all. You know, the the fines were paid. Like right. he obviously got some kind of punishment. They just seem to be a little light handed. And right. so I'm like, was this just like small town? He knows the judge. They know his family. Right. Was everybody treated that way? I don't know. But it. I hate to say it because he does seem like a really nice guy, but. Him and cars and alcohol seem to be a little problematic. Well, oh, man, I hope that's all taken care of because, I mean, it's kind of a pattern and you don't know what could happen next. If You know, especially if you're just getting – I'm not saying this was a slap on the wrist. You know, they didn't necessarily find him guilty of what they originally charged him with. and um, But it does feel like he's gotten little slaps on the wrist all the way. So you're not really having to pay these huge prices that maybe somebody else would have to. But the interesting thing to me is that he knew to go home and to hold up. And that I was like, what? how did he know to do that? Well, he's been through this before. That's how exactly. he knew. Exactly. I think this information really changes the whole dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. It impacted his behavior. I mean, again, if I was the victim's wife or family member, God forbid, like, and I found all this out, I would be fighting to make sure that was included. And yeah. I, I would not be happy with him getting no jail time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know what his probation entailed. I couldn't find that. Mm-hmm. Did they take away his license? Was he able to? I'm sure he couldn't leave the country or the state, but could he drive? Freely? It doesn't I, seem like any of those accidents happened anywhere but Iowa. So, you exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> right. He's a danger to his own society. Yeah. Oh, um, man. So anyway, I really thought that information changed how I viewed that accident and yeah. him. I don't think he had criminal intent. But I do think, like you said, him not getting the full repercussion of those actions maybe just maybe allowed him to think he could keep operating the way he was. So yeah. hopefully this is the last call for yeah. him and he knows better now. So that's basically the the trials and tribulations Ooh. of Chris Souls. couple other interesting things just kind of Bachelor related before we conclude and I hear more of your thoughts. I found out that contestants on The Bachelor are put under a psych evaluation before coming on. And maybe you knew this, but I thought, well, that's good. Yeah. 
because we see them and we call them crazy and we think some of them are crazy, but actually they have been <laughs> evaluated and on paper, technically they are not, you know, deemed somebody who's going to be at risk to themselves or others right. in, a, in a seriously damaging, scary, you know, mentally unwell kind of way. So I have to imagine, and I think I even read somewhere that they do have investigators comb through everybody's criminal records as well. So I'm just curious what they think of when they see all of this. And I'm sure they've seen, there were DUIs of other contestants I read. I guess they make passes for a lot of it. But to me, if I looked at all of that, I would, and and then I'm bringing somebody on a show that like plies them with alcohol. That's part of the premise. Right. I might think twice, but I don't know. That's just me. So yeah, I'm just curious what you think of that. And did you know that they were put under such an intense evaluation? I knew that some of the shows were. I don't think they've always said that. Maybe they have. But to me, I'm always so perplexed whenever you hear that somebody's gone on a show and then find out about this person's dark background. And you're like, how did an internet sleuth find this and the producers not find this? It or makes the legal so team of the network. Like ABC doesn't want the risk of having like somebody with some crazy skeleton in their yeah, past, right? It's just So maybe it is newer. Maybe they didn't do it in 2002, but they do it in the last 10 yeah, years or something. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know that it's been all along, but I know yeah, more I recently it definitely has been. But yeah, I don't know. The whole thing upsets me. And I feel like... Not that you can't make those mistakes and reform and uh, make better choices and, and the rest of your life shouldn't be canceled or whatever. But of course. if you're looking at 20 bachelors and you've got one with a rap sheet, <laughs> and you know, for all of these things, yeah. you think you'd be like, safe bet. Let's go with the one that doesn't have any sort of background in anything. There's no skeletons here. Like, do yeah. those men just not exist? Is that what I'm well, finding that, out? <laughs> or are they just not applying to The Bachelor, well, maybe, which maybe could be the more accurate Maybe that's it. Yeah. Fact. I also, I wanted to mention this too, just because it's the first episode I've done on this show with a, a, a victim who's died. I just, so Kenneth Mosher, I just want to mention, was described as a kind, hardworking farmer. He was married to his high school sweetheart. Aww. They had two children. He was a deeply loved member of their community. And uh, a neighbor said, he's what all good Christian farmers should be, humble and hardworking. Aww. So just so, so sad and unnecessary. Um, and I just wanted to make sure we had a little bit of who Kenneth was. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really, really sad story. And I watched some post-incident interviews with Chris, and he is incredibly contrite. I mean, he almost can't talk about it. Yeah. his You can hear his voice get very dry, like... It, it, it's it pains him. Right. So I I don't think he's callous. I don't think he takes this lightly. He right. doesn't present that way. Um, but I do hope he's you know sitting during this COVID and you know COVID coincided with his one of the years of his probation. Yeah. I think his probation will end this year. So he had a lot of time to think. Right. And he also had a little fling with a bachelorette, Victoria Fuller or Fulner. I'm gonna get that wrong. She flew to Iowa during COVID and they had like a little relationship for a few minutes. Fantastic. Maybe they'll <laughs> take it to stagecoach when that opens back up. <laughs> and she, yeah, exactly. And she is a bachelorette who has a mugshot as well. And I think it was a DUI. So maybe they just needed to commiserate and like swap stories. I don't know. Yeah. But that's it. That's the story. That is an interesting story. And yeah, I feel like I heard a little bit about that story and then it kind of went away and maybe it was due to COVID or maybe it was because the trial lasted forever and they pushed it off not that it lasted forever but they kept pushing it off that you kind of forget I think so I think it was hyper it was big time news in Iowa I think out he, everywhere else maybe not as much um and yeah the bachelor moves quick right like yeah there were a new seasons new bachelors to talk about and so yeah and that was probably also the work of his team keeping yeah it. well and especially that he, they didn't have this high blood alcohol you know, content right off the bat. Right. It's right. all assumed, you know, later on. But had they had that, I think we would have seen more and A more much about different. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And before we get off the topic of The Bachelor, Chris Harrison, the legendary hosted every season. I don't know how that guy does it. Chris Harrison is stepping down. Yeah. So basically, Rachel K, which I love that on all these shows, they just give first name and like your yeah. initial, like you're in third grade. She attends uh, something called an old South party, 
whenever she was back in college in a sorority. And he basically was like, hey, we didn't think of things like that then and kind of defended the whole thing instead of being like, maybe that wasn't a good idea. Oh, maybe she should. And, it, you know, these girls aren't old. <laughs> this was like three years ago. Oh, my before. gosh. That's what I read. And they were like, yeah, yeah, it's coming back to me. They were like, well, through a 2021 lens, like we right. wouldn't do that. I'm like, this was four years ago or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It was not, this is not. In, it wasn't the 90s. No, no, it wasn't like, uh, we should all learn and do better. But we're talking like. Recent a, a month before COVID. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. so he got a lot of heat for that, as he should have. And he um, ends up stepping down. But now we have some new options, which I'm let's get some fresh blood in there. There is some blood to come. I don't know. I don't know if I think this is just for bachelor in paradise, but it could be like basically auditioning. So first one, there's four names that are out there that are like rotating hosts, I guess. Okay. Who do I want to start with? Um, I'll start with this one. Lance Bass. Okay. I I could do that. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Okay. I have no choice. I'm going to save for last. Next one. Super fan of the bachelor. David Spade. He loves The Bachelor. He does. He's done some funny guesting. Yeah. And he's like into things. it. He really enjoys it. So I think okay. he'll be an interesting one. Um, the next one is Titus. Is it Burgess from uh, Kimmy Schmidt? Yeah. Oh, I would watch that. Right? Just How much for fun? him. <laughs> right? That'll be it. Am I'd I watch per- anything he does. Right? And my personal favorite, Lil John. Surprising. Yeah. I liked, I liked Lil that John in the mix. I like this, you know, maybe they're getting the memo that I it's been too, it. it's been too like heteronormative, too whitewashed. Like maybe they're branching out. That's a diverse cast. It is a very diverse hosts. group of, uh, a group of guys, but yeah. I like it. Yeah. I think it's, that's a very interesting, uh, group. I love it. I think it'll be a lot yeah, of Yeah. Well, they need to, they need to shake it up. So I'm it's, totally here for that. He bores the crap out of me. No offense he, to Chris Harrison, but I just don't find it like. He brings nothing. No, absolutely. Like he they brings could nothing. have removed him and let us look at a wall and even did the like the little want wall voice from the Peanuts mom's, you know, Charlie Brown's teacher. Totally. And I would have never noticed a difference. So no. I'm excited no. about that. I, I I look forward to watching it. I think maybe bachelor people won't like the new yeah, You know, I can't d- kind of like- figure that out. The original, like, diehards. Yeah, they might want to be purists, we'll call purists, them. Purists, yes. Um, <laughs> wait, and this reminds me, when, now that you brought up David Spade, that I wanted to bring up. Have you seen uh, Burning Love? I love Burning Love. It's, oh, God. I like Burning Love more than The Bachelor. Oh, absolutely. That was on Hulu. What? Not not Ken Marino. I always get that guy's name confused, the guy that plays the hot stud wasn't it like the stud is what they call it on there yeah something yeah he's funny. a firefighter he, like a mm-hmm. hunk or something yeah oh it's so good it's produced by um ben stiller oh wait i think which, i did know that because i feel like his ex-wife his wife was on it mm-hmm. yes oh is it his ex yes. uh, yeah jennifer aniston was in it Kristen bell it's a parody if you haven't seen it of the bachelor and unfortunately right now it's only on pluto so it's oh. kind of hard to access like i could only get clips on youtube but it used to be like very available to stream yeah i but, feel um, like it was on hulu because did you ever see the um real housewives of orlando did you ever see that it's no. not real housewives no. but it's um it's a parody as well and i think that is on I, oh hot wives of atlanta or hot wives of orlando I think i've heard of it i don't know that i ever watched it i love a good parody it's so ridiculous but you have to watch it i i, I enjoy will. it and being orlando it makes it extra terrible for me. Yeah, but, um, a little close to home. <laughs> too close, if you ask me. Lots of talk about alligators. We don't see alligators nearly as much as they think we do, but yeah. Yeah, if we believed, you know, the news, we'd think they're like out to get us every minute. Yeah, I'm out there wrangling them, eating my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are you watching? Can you give me some clues? I'll try and guess. Yes. Okay. First clue HBO Max. So let's just get it out there. Is there any other channel that this we watch? This show is completely sponsored, but they don't know by HBO yeah, Max. It, it's just a matter of time. Right? Put it on the vision board. <laughs> Next one, Sarah Jessica Parker. <gasps> my favorite, my birthday buddy, speaking of March 25th. This is going to be so hard for you, but she is not my favorite. I put her in the same category as Drew Barrymore, where the piece of my brain is missing that is supposed to like those two, and I'm not a huge fan. I feel like she just brings it at the source everywhere, and she's just there to make me feel stupid. I think she's beautiful. Melissa. I know. Okay, so you're, okay, so I see what's happening here. You're jealous. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I know kind she's of. not for everybody. I don't think she's like the most well-loved actress out there. I think she's a little controversial. I think she I, just, I adore her. I feel like she likes herself a little too much. Like she believes her own hype a little too much. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be this person. But Drew Barrymore is the same way for me. I can. I, I don't feel anything about Drew Barrymore except that like just nothing. E.T. I don't. I know it's like a take her to leave it. Like, I don't know. Adorable as an E.T. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't love her. Yeah. I don't hate her. Yeah. But you have feelings about Sarah Jessica. Okay. No, just like that key part in my brain just like. But was you're watching never a show there. with her. Watching a show with her. The other okay. person in it is uh, Thomas Hayden Church from Wings. <gasps> you know, I always bring it back to Wings somehow. I know. The 1990s I know classic. <laughs> Okay. So are those the clues? Those are my clues. Yeah. Is it divorce? There's a few seasons. It is. Yes. And uh, so funny because I'm a fan of hers and I've never watched it. So okay. this is funny. It's good. My, our friend Stacy is the one that recommended it to me. But I will say, don't tell your husband you're watching it the day before your anniversary. My husband's like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching? I was like, I don't want to say. He's like, what is it? I was like, divorce. <laughs> and then I'm going to top it off with how to marry multimillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to round the night up. Yeah. So um, it's, yeah, it's, it's good advice. Funny and uh, cute. And I don't know if it's cute, but it's funny and it's fast. Uh, Molly Shannon's in it. I love Molly Shannon. Oh. She's very Molly Shannon in it. So she's a lot. Um, but it's them getting a divorce and kind of working through it. And dating seems really hard. So I'm pretty happy where <laughs> I'm at. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, the Bachelor. Hello. I know. See, full circle. So it's yeah, extreme. that's I don't know if I would like fully recommend it to people. I'm not going to go hard for it like I would for Mayor of East Mayor of East Town, but I I'm that's what I'm watching. What about you? Well, it's just so interesting that I haven't watched that. It's definitely on my radar. When you said HBO and her, I had a feeling that I knew. Yeah. So I will. I I I love her. So why not? Um, You're gonna have to just. I just feel like she's talking down to me. I, there's something wrong with me. Is it me. her character in the shows that you're I'm thinking of? I'm convinced like she gets the script and she takes all the words like happy and has to do like... Elated. Okay. So maybe you're <laughs> Sarah Jessica Murray. <laughs> I'll share a birthday like yeah. I said. Oh man, yeah. So I met, she, I met her at a baseball game okay. when I was in high school and it was so awkward, but my friend's dad was a big wig in like the major league baseball or American league baseball. I can't remember, but he got really good tickets and we got to go. We okay. were literally surrounded by celebrities and Sarah Jessica's one of them. Uh -huh. And her mom said, go say hello, go tell her you, you know, are actresses. And like, we were so mortified because we were both in high school and wanted to yeah. be actors. And so we had to go be like, Aww. Oh, Miss Parker, we love your work. She was, very, was she, she was very gracious. What words oh, yeah, did no, she, she use? She was lovely. I, she didn't say a lot. She just yeah. like smiled and nodded and was like, that's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Something like that. Jack Nicholson was also at that baseball game and was not lovely and was gross. <gasps> and like me too kind of thing. Really? Yeah. Really inappropriate. Yeah. Uh, remember okay. whenever you dated Lara Flynn Boyle? That was yes, really good. Yes, I do. Yeah. <sighs> I digress. Um, okay. Here's my show. Okay. It's not HBO. It's my other H favorite, Hulu. Hulu. Unfavorable season. All right. That's it. That's Wait, favorite. unfavorable oh. season? Well, no, that's like my twist of the title. Okay. Unfavorable season. Cruel summer. Yes. <laughs> I knew you get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just about to finish Cruel Summer. Oh, cool. I saw that today and I thought I wanted to start that. Um, I read the it's, description finally. Yeah. It's definitely young adult, but I think a lot of actual adults, I hope, I think are watching it. I loved it in the beginning. It's losing me. Uh, it's basically takes place in two different years in the 90s. So you're going to really identify with okay, like I'll love it. the fashion from it because they're middle schoolers in 93, 94. And it flips between two summers. Basically, one girl gets kidnapped and she's the popular it girl. And one girl, kind of like the nerdy loser, takes over her life while she's kidnapped. She becomes the it girl and takes her boyfriend. But then there's a twist because... Does the not cool girl know something more about the kidnapping than she's <gasps> saying? And then it's like a she said, she said, and they're kind of becoming Ooh. adversaries. It's it's pretty good, but I, I feel like it's losing itself. I, I need it to be finished, but I have to see it through to the end. What if Sarah Jessica Parker comes in the third season? How will you feel Saves about that? Saves the day. She'll just redeem <laughs> the whole thing. It will just be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh man. I, I knew I had a feeling as soon as I said I wasn't a fan of hers that it was gonna be like 
Did you see she my was on your vision board up? or something? Yeah, yeah your whole <laughs> yeah. face changed. She's I not on my vision board, but Kelly Ripa is. Um, okay. I also have feelings about right her. Here. Okay. You yeah. have what? Kelly Ripa is just very extra. I don't like what she did to Michael Strahan. I think she has calves that go for days. I love her calves. I'm very obsessed with them. Her hair is always cute. I love that she and Mark Consuelos are still together and found love. Would I want to have coffee with her? No, I don't drink coffee. And frankly, I don't want to sit with her. (laughs) Wow, (laughs) Melissa, that's fighting words. Okay. I've never seen or met her. Uh, I don't have a story to add here, but I just, I I like her. You know what? That's okay. I I don't even like the show. Like, it's, it's not even like that. It's like my favorite show. I just, I like her style of hosting. I think she's a great, I think she's a good interviewer. She is. But have you seen her stupid ads for vitamins that come up on Facebook all the time? You're going to see yes. them now that I've said it. Yes, And I she'll have. just lay there and be like, every day I take blah, 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 blah for energy. And I'm like, well, you also eat no, you kale <laughs> and like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, sure, yeah. whatever. And then you're like, okay, next thing. What ad do we do next? Is this for pooping? I don't know what's next. Yes. So... <laughs> Anyway, I know. No, I get it. I get it. She's a little Rinna-ish to me. Oh, wow. Yeah, I could see that. I could see it. I could see why you think that. I don't feel it, but. Do you want to go back and say that we're kind of friends? Because at this point, you can. I'll I'll give it to you. Maybe you were right. No, no, I'm cool. Um, Just (laughs) I'm going to find out who you love and maybe I don't love them. (laughs) Well, I had a thing for Val Kilmer for many years. And so if you want to drag me for that, you can. I can't drag you for that. I think most women would agree with you on that one. He I doesn't mean, do it for me, but like, I you're not alone. I think he kind of does uh, for me, <laughs> even with a scarf. Okay. So. All right. How about next episode? I'm yes. dying to know. I okay. want to pass the torch. All right. Well, the rose. Well, get this. My first clue is rose. No way. Yeah. I did it on I purpose. Love, no, I, didn't. I love, see. It's the, the through line. There you go. I love it. Yeah. Okay, the next. Rose. The next one is Sarah Jessica Parker. I'm just kidding. The next one. (laughs) No. (laughs) The next one is The Apprentice. Okay. And the last one is Bandana. Oh, my gosh. Melissa. You can get this one. Rose. Rose, The Apprentice, Apprentice, Bandana. Okay. Well, I can't get it in this last minute we have left, but I will get it. Okay. I believe in you. Yes, I will. (laughs) Okay. Okay. My wheels are turning. We should, this is dead air. So I can't wait. Happy research. Thank you so much. I bid you farewell. (laughs) Pass the torch. Um, Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay, good. Well, thank you everybody for for getting into it on criminality with us about The Bachelor this week. That was big. And uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. We're at Criminality Show. And if you haven't left us a review yet and you like the show and listen, go ahead. We won't be mad. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Bigger words? Rebecca's SJP can help you. Yeah, kind of a friend. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're friends now, guys. Well, I'm glad they are, and I'll just be your kind <laughs> of friend. <laughs> Never going to live this one down. Never. All right, well, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Criminality. If you're enjoying the show, please head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you listen and give the show a rating and review. The reality is it would be a crime to keep your thoughts to yourself. And come join the fun outside of the podcast and follow us on social media. We are at Criminality Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Memes are welcome. We'll see you in two weeks with a new episode. Until then, you can catch my co-host Melissa on her weekly show, Moms and Murder. And Rebecca Sebastian on her podcast, Dialogue, a true crime conversation. Don't forget, loving reality isn't a crime.